This video is sponsored by Altium. Hello everyone and welcome to the second module of this course. In this module, we are going to study UNet architecture in detail, and after that, we are going to implement it within the TensorFlow framework. First of all, we will examine a research paper on the UNet architecture. The title of the paper is UNet Convolutional Networks for Biomedical Image Segmentation. Now, let's have a look at the block diagram given in this paper. So, it begins with the input followed by the encoder block, then transferred to the decoder blocks, and finally, as an output, we receive the segmentation map. And in between the encoder and the decoder, we have the skip connections. These skip connections help transfer information from the encoder to the decoder part of the network. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise, and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Now, let's go through the most important part of the paper, the network architecture. This part of the paper contains the technical detail about the encoder and decoder structure. The network architecture is illustrated in figure 1. It consists of a contracting path and an expansive path. So, the term contracting here refers to the encoder part of the network, and the term expansive path refers to the decoder part of the network. The contracting path follows the typical architecture of a convolutional network. It consists of the repeated application of two 3x3 convolutions, each followed by a rectified linear unit and a 2x2 max pooling operation with a stride of 2 per downsampling. These lines give you the technical explanation of what layer you need to use to build the encoder block. So it begins with a two 3x3 convolutional layer followed by a re-LU and then a 2x2 two two max pooling. So here max pooling is used to reduce the height and width of the feature map by a factor of 2. Let's continue. At each downsampling step, we double the number of feature channels. Now here we talk about the decoder block or the decoder part of the network. Every step in the expansive path consists of an upsampling of the feature map followed by a 2x2 two two convolution. In brackets it says up convolution. So here, upconvolution refers to transposed convolution that is used to assemble the height and width of the feature map by a factor of 2, and it halves the number of feature channels. A concatenation with a correspondingly cropped feature map from the contracting paths. So, after the upsampling, using transposed convolution, the process is followed by concatenation with the appropriate skip connection from the encoder part of the network. In addition, two 3x3 three three convolutions, each followed by a re-LU. Until now, we've seen the entire explanation of the decoder block. Let's continue. The cropping is necessary due to the loss of border pixels in every convolution. So, at this point, this sentence is not crucial for us. At the final layer, a 1x1 one one convolution is used to map each 64 component into a feature vector to the desired number of classes. So here, in the last layer, it takes the output of the decoder and converts that into a segmentation map using a 1x1 one one convolution. So, this paragraph is the entire explanation of the encoder and the decoder block. We will apply this knowledge in the next videos where we will implement both of these blocks.